Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Dell Hubbard with Perfection Bird Dog Training. Uh, today is our weekly online uh, bird, Perfection uh, Dirt Bird Dog tra Training. Uh, Jeremiah Alexander is uh, not going to be able to be with us today. He had a crisis situation. Uh, he may join us a little bit later, but uh, uh, for today, uh, we'll be discussing uh, several uh, issues uh, in relation to positive gun dog training. Uh, one has to do with uh, Jeremiah's uh, recent uh, uh, quail hunt, guided quail hunt in Georgia with his English Sutter Bruiser. Uh, two, uh, we'll be looking at uh, uh, some specific things that you can do in relation to uh, training your bird dog uh, uh, from a positive perspective that uh, uh, will uh, uh, help benefit and uh, effectively increase your uh, effectiveness with, uh, with training. Uh, third, I uh, would like to uh, announce our uh, upcoming uh, positive gun dog seminar that's uh, coming up at the last weekend in this March that will be held in uh, Jasper, Alabama and uh, at Perfection Bird Dog Training Grounds. And uh, we're having a, a number of people sign up. Uh, there's uh, 10 slots available and uh, the total of being able to bring six dogs uh, to participate uh, in the seminar. And uh, so uh, I'd like to uh, uh, look at these uh, several issues. But uh, First of all, uh, I'd like to give a shout out to the, the Cigar Club here in, in Jasper, Alabama, that has uh, graciously allowed us to uh, continually broadcast from uh, the Cigar Club. And uh, uh, so, uh, Jeremiah, this past uh, weekend, uh, took uh, his English Sutter Bruiser to Georgia on a guided quail hunt. And uh, Bruiser was uh, trained with uh, positive gun dog uh, training techniques. Uh, he was allowed uh, to hunt uh, totally without a knee collar, uh, performed uh, marvelously to the uh, uh, commands and uh, uh, had a, just uh, wonderful points and, and uh, it was all uh, uh, made available through uh, the positive gun dog training techniques that Bruiser was trained with. Uh, they killed uh, uh, a 20 plus quail. Uh, they were, uh, 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 while they were planted quail, uh, they were uh, very similar to hunting wild quail. So they were, uh, didn't have to kick them up or uh, get them ready. Bruiser went on point, made this marvelous points, uh, held steady to, to wing and uh, to, to shot and uh, so uh, uh, they were uh, not allowed to uh, uh, get very close and have to kick up the birds like you normally do with uh, pin raised birds so it turned out to be a, just an absolutely wonderful hunt and uh, Bruiser uh, made Dr. Jeremiah very proud of uh, his experience there uh, so uh, he, he may uh, uh, discuss that uh, if he's able to uh, arrange it so that he can uh, join us a little bit later on. Uh, secondly, uh, I'd like to uh, uh, welcome any questions that, uh, that you may have and uh, please uh, uh, type in your questions and uh, we'll certainly uh, uh, address those uh, questions uh, in detail in regards to uh, uh, specific things that you may be having uh, issues with, with uh, training your, your, your bird dog or questions that you have that, that has to do with uh, uh, positive uh, gun dog training. Um, secondly, as I mentioned, uh, there, there's some uh, specific things that you can do uh, in regards to uh, training your dog, bird dog uh, positively uh, that runs a central, a central theme to uh, all of your training, regardless of uh, what specific techniques that you decide to use or, or uh, et cetera. 
while I have developed uh, some some very uh, uh, specific ways of uh, obtaining perfection uh, with the bird dogs without the use of e-collar or force training, uh, there there are several uh, things that you can that you can do that will uh, certainly uh, help uh, with uh, 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 training. Uh, the first first thing that uh, is so important is to uh, to make it fun for for your for your bird dog. Uh, if they if they uh, enjoy the experience and uh, uh, then they're going to uh, go into a learning mode. Uh, they uh, develop that uh, good positive uh, uh, results uh, uh, from from the training. They they enjoy it. They look forward to it. And uh, above all, it uh, imprints in their mind about um, what they specifically uh, want to want to do uh, in regards to the training. So uh, keep it fun. Uh, uh, when, when you start introducing a new behavior. Uh, uh, most dogs, uh, they they may tuck their tail a little bit with anything that's new, but uh, when you're providing a, a positive reinforcement, and I use the food-based reward system to initially establish new behaviors uh, with the dogs, uh, uh, they uh, the tail comes up, the wags, and and they say, well, let's keep going. Let's, let's, let's keep this training. This is fun. And uh, so uh, so it's very important to, to keep it fun uh, for a dog. Um, uh, if you ever experience a sense of uh, frustration within yourself, uh, that's the key to just stop training at that point because uh, the dog certainly picks up on your emotions and uh, they will uh, 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 not uh, receive and uh, the type of uh, things that you're attempting to to train them uh secondly uh, uh the thing that that i see that's that's most important has been very important uh, with my training is uh consistency uh when you're when you're training your uh bird dog uh it's uh it's so important to uh have uh, uh, every single time that uh, a behavior is established, you have a target goal that you want to provide a reward for that behavior. So they have a <clears throat> high consistency of uh, reward for uh, each behavior uh, un until it's uh, established. And uh, so uh, any variation uh, in the, uh, the training uh, and moves out of that consistency level, well, then uh, it's going to be somewhat confusing uh, to the dog. And But it's, if it's consistent and uh, say, for example, that you're teaching uh, to uh, a recall uh, to come to you, uh, that uh, every single time that they, uh, for example, with mine, when I'm training, uh, when they come to me, uh, I want to make sure that, that they have a, a, a reward at the, at the end of that event. So you give them a recall such as here, and when they come to you, uh, you want them to uh, receive something that's positive. And once again, I use a food-based reward system. I use a, a chicken hot dogs cut up. Um, and uh, so when they come to me, uh, they're expecting something uh, positive. It's so different from uh, people like when you go to work, uh, you, you do a particular task, uh, you, you expect to get paid. And uh, for for the bird dogs, it's uh, certainly no some dif no different. And uh, uh, them coming to you, well, they come to you, make it fun, make it a consistent, reliable thing. So every time they come to you, there's going to be a reward uh, for that. Now uh, later on down the road. Uh, uh, they have uh, been consistently rewarded for that, and that behavior becomes embedded within them. And then uh, through uh, particular schedules of reinforcement that BF Scanner shows us uh, that you can uh, move away from the uh, consistency of every time reward. But in establishing the uh, 
uh, behavior uh, initially, you want to be very consistent in uh, uh, providing a reward for, for each of those behaviors that you're training. Uh, in addition to mention that, uh, I work on one behavior at a time. So if I'm doing recall and I want the dog to come to me, uh, then uh, each time they come to me, then there's going to be a reward for them. So they establish that, okay, you give me the here command, I come to you, then they get a paycheck, they get a reward. And that uh, anything that's rewarded uh, highly increases the chance of that behavior occurring again. And then through consistency of that, uh, you start getting uh, the uh, behavior very well ingrained and you get an excellent recall uh, on that. Uh, so uh, consistency is uh, so so in, in, in important. Uh, another part uh, that I use uh, with uh, and encourage with uh, training positively, along with the, the consistency, uh, is a, a, a practice. Uh, practice and practice so that uh, you uh, uh, achieve a, a degree of fluency uh, in the in the learning process of, of the dog for that particular behavior if you try to mix uh, training uh, behaviors uh, then uh, what you're going to look at is uh, somewhat confusion possibly uh, with the dog and so if you're getting, say, for example, 10, out, I, I work for 10 out of 10 responses. So if I say here and the dog comes to me, there's a reward. And, and, and when I see a reliability and consistency of that behavior of the dog coming to me, uh, then I know that uh, the, the dog has achieved a state of uh, fluency about that, that particular behavior. And uh, so practice, practice, practice until you're uh, achieving what I work for in perfection uh, is uh, getting 10 out of 10 responses. So if you give the dog uh, the command here, they come to you and they do that consistently 10 out of 10 times, then you know that mo most likely you have achieved a state of uh, fluency um, uh, with that dog. And uh, uh, so uh, uh, that's important uh, to have that degree of uh, uh, practice uh, with a dog. Now, once the dog has uh, achieved the, the fluency uh, state of uh, uh, that behavior, uh, and you move on to the next behavior and, and repeat that same thing. So you have the, the consistency, the uh, uh, you're also having uh, uh, practice with it until you, until you achieve uh, the perfection in that uh, particular behavior. But uh, does that mean that that's the only time that you uh, visit that behavior? No. Uh, once the dog has achieved the, the, the fluent skill uh, that you want to uh, establish with, with the dog, um, <clears throat> with a uh, particularly with uh, the bird dogs, uh, upland and uh, and waterfowl, uh, I want to instate a, a very firm state of uh, recall and uh, stay. So uh, I work with uh, 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 coming to me. That's so important. And uh, and then, uh, but uh, that doesn't mean that's the only time that, that I train on that particular behavior. Once to retrieve the uh, fluency of that state and I move on to the next behavior that doesn't mean that I don't ever go back and and, and revisit that uh, particular behavior such as recall and uh, then I move on to the uh, uh, next be behavior uh, involved with that so uh, when, when you look at these uh, particular things that uh, run through the uh, training positively uh, uh, one, you know, you want to make it fun for the dog. You want to make it uh, uh, consistent, and then uh, practice uh, on on uh, on the behavior. Uh, you want, uh, in addition to that, you want to try to keep uh, 
any kind of uh, variables uh, that may be associated with it, such as uh, uh, ex uh, distractions, uh, other dogs around, other people around, uh, you, you want to limit the amount of uh, distractions and have uh, and have make the, any variable a constant uh, in, in that training process. So when, when you eliminate uh, the variables uh, involved in it, and once again, that could be uh, distractions of a, another dog or a person, different situation, uh, et cetera, uh, so that you know that uh, your training is very specifically uh, 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 cause and effect. So when you say here, they come to you, and there's not any extraneous variables involved with it that would uh, uh, be associated uh, uh, with it. Uh, um, dogs are very, very acutely aware of uh, any uh, thing around them just because uh, dogs have their senses are so much greater with sight, uh, sound, smell, and um, they... Uh, 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 very quickly uh, pick up on, on those behaviors. And, uh, and so you don't know that with your cause and effect that, uh, that that's uh, not the only thing that they're responding to. So you get into a, a, a discriminating stimulus uh, uh, aspect of, of training. So you want to have one stimulus and uh, 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 one uh, behavior in relation uh, to that. Uh, back in the early 1900s, there was uh, uh, a guy, uh, a phenomenon called uh, Clever Hans uh, that uh, that many of you may be uh, familiar with. And uh, Clever Hans uh, 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 was a horse uh, that uh, that uh, the uh, trainer had had. Uh, basically fool the world thinking that this horse can count, add, subtract, and, and divide. And so people from all over the world came to see Clever Hans because this horse could uh, actually uh, count, uh, add, subtract, and, and divide. And it was uh, pretty well uh, uh, baffling a lot of the people and they were amazed at just how, how smart this uh, horse was. Well, uh, uh, Clever, uh, in Clever Hans, the, the trainer uh, had, had a very uh, 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 dis cue, discriminating cue to the horse to stop counting with his, and he did this with his uh, hoof. And uh, so we'd ask him, uh, what's, let's say, one plus one. Uh, well, the horse would uh, take his paw and, uh, or hoof, rather. And, uh, and, and hit the ground, and then uh, the trainer would give that specific cue, and that might just be just a little uh, uh, movement of the finger or a little touch of the uh, uh, ear that may not be aware to the uh, people that's observing. So they, they really truly thought that uh, Clever Hans could, could add, subtract, divide, multiply. And so there was a group of scientists that said, okay, well, let's put this to the test. And uh, with Clever Hans, uh, they put the horse on one side of, uh, of a barrier and put the trainer on the other side. And, and so the trainer said, what's one plus one? Uh, well, the horse was not able to do that. And so what they discovered then and uh, debunked uh, the, uh, the, the idea that uh, the horse was uh, smart enough to add, subtract, divide, et cetera, uh, that he, he was operating off of cues. And, uh, and so they uh, discovered then that, uh, that the uh, uh, horse was operating off that very minute cue. So how does that apply to bird dog training? Well, when, when you're training, uh, and once again, this is with the positive end dog training, et cetera, uh, the dog is very much aware of all the different little cues uh, that you do. And so uh, when I'm training, I specifically want to uh, uh, remain almost like a statue because I don't want to give any uh, additional cue. 
so uh, uh, what I've seen in some trainers is that uh, when they give the light like, say here command on recall, uh, they may uh, say like that, or they'll give some kind of cue or, uh, or a behavioral cue that they're not aware of, but the dog's aware of, and then they respond if they don't have the two combinations of here and, and that and that behavior, then uh, the the dog does not uh, uh, come come to them uh, most most of the time because they have learned that cue just like in clever Hans uh, that was so clever at uh, at uh, deciding them. So uh, in in training, uh, you want to uh, once again uh, make your variables uh, a consonant, and and uh, and you do this by uh, remaining still. Uh, uh, and uh, giving giving the cue, and so when you say here, uh, and and you want the dog to come to you, that you're not adding a different visual or verbal uh, uh, cues to the dog. You want it to be, you know, one one isolated command. And then you get the one behavior so that, uh, you know, the dog's not seeing a, a, def, a different uh, aspects of the uh, 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 here command. And then, of course, that uh, applies to uh, all uh, uh, behaviors that, that you train. And uh, so uh, now, uh, for example, uh, uh, when I'm uh, working with waterfowl dogs or, or uh, uh, upland bird dogs, I say uh, I might add additional uh, cues to that. But initially, uh, I remain very steady, almost like statue-like, and uh, uh, to give the command so that they understand that uh, uh, the behaviors. So there's not any additional extraneous uh, that then through classical conditioning principles uh, you can add uh, behavior commands uh, 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 to that such as uh, I, I do a uh, what I want to do here uh, I might give a like here like that and then the dog understands that uh, uh, that that an association will come to him so when I want to recall I can neither do this I even here and they come in straight to me uh, with the waterfowl dog is to sit straight in front of me and look up at me but the uh, uh, upland uh, bird dog is to come to me and of course the upland bird dog you don't want you don't want them to sit you want them to to be um, uh, standing in front of you so uh, you can add different uh, variables like that, but uh, not initially. Uh, so uh, th those are some things that uh, that are important uh, in regards to uh, training uh, positive uh, reinforcement. There's many, many others uh, in relation to that. But uh, uh, to begin with, if you run these uh, different things that discussed uh, through your positive gun dog training, uh, you'll get uh, just excellent and, and perfection type uh, behaviors by isolating extraneous uh, uh, variables on that. Being consistent, uh, uh, practice, and uh, uh, you'll you'll obtain the behaviors uh, uh, quite quickly on that. Uh, and above all, uh, keep it fun. So uh, that's uh, just uh, a few of the many. Uh, things that's uh, that's important in uh, training uh, um, a positive uh, positive methods to uh, uh, with your with your gun dogs. Uh, uh, thirdly, I'd like to mention that the uh, seminar that uh, Dr. Jeremiah and myself are conducting uh, here in Jasper uh, in uh, the last weekend in March is uh, limited to uh, ten participants and six dogs uh, it'll uh, be quite intensive uh, we'll be uh, supplying uh, uh, lunch for, uh, for the people uh, uh, we'll uh, first of all uh, provide some bases some classroom 
material of, uh, of uh, why this works. Uh, uh, this, uh, this, all of our training is based on scientific methods that, uh, uh, that we can uh, contribute to uh, uh, Urban Pavlov and uh, uh, B.F. Skinner and a few other theorists uh, through the time. So uh, uh, when you come to our seminar, uh, you'll get theory as to why this works. It's not uh, based on, well, uh, this is what grandpa uh, taught me or great grandpa taught me, or this is just what I've always known. It's, there'll be scientific uh, bases to back up uh, all of our uh, training uh, methods. And, uh, and so uh, you'll, you'll get that. Uh, the people that um, uh, bring their dogs uh, will have a hands-on uh, uh, opportunities uh, to, uh, to, for the people to take their dogs uh, through the different steps that uh, uh, myself and Dr. Jeremiah uh, have developed uh, to train your uh, bird dog in positive methods. And we'll have all the training aids that you that you need there. So, so uh, you'll get uh, some classroom uh, uh, ideas about how it works. We'll show you videos. So there'll be uh, videos that um, that you'll be able to uh, take with you. So, but uh, information, and uh, so then to be able to then we'll go out in the field and uh, allow you, the ones that uh, bring their dogs, uh, can actually take them step by step by step uh, through the process of uh, uh, training your bird dog. So uh, when you, when you uh, complete the seminar, the three-day seminar, you will have theory as to why this works, uh, why this is the most effective method, and then you will get the uh, hands-on experience. Uh, you'll have the expertise of myself and Dr. Jeremiah Alexander uh, there with you to guide you through step by step by step uh, process so that you can get the uh, desired uh, finish that, that you want. So uh, it'll be a, a very fun seminar. Uh, once again, it is limited to 10 people. Uh, we're having people sign up. We, uh, we've got uh, some people coming from uh, Atlanta, Georgia, uh, and uh, uh, other places that's uh, fairly close by. And uh, so they're and they definitely want to bring their bird dogs. So once again, it's limited to uh, six dogs. Uh, we feel that uh, ten participants that we can uh, give each uh, individual uh, adequate attention. Um, the uh, uh, procedures of uh, what you need to do to apply uh, the positive reinforcement to get the perfection uh, in your bird dog that you that you desire. So uh, we welcome uh, uh, each and every one. Uh, you can uh, contact me through positivegundog at gmail.com or you can call me at 205 Three hundred seven six two five, and uh, reserve your your place for for the seminar. Once again, it'll be held at the end of March, the last um, uh, weekend. It'll be a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and uh, so uh, certainly look forward to having each and all of you uh, participate. Well, uh, looks like about out of time, and. Uh, uh, please, with uh, any additional questions, and of course, I've been receiving questions through my email and also uh, phone calls from different people that uh, uh, they're tuning into my uh, YouTube videos and uh, training videos uh, under uh, Dr. Dale Hubbard at Positive uh, Gun Dog Training, and uh, and uh, so it's uh, sparked a uh, a lot of interest and uh, people seem to be getting uh, quite a bit of uh, uh, answers that uh, uh, they were having difficulty in finding otherwise. So we are uh, uh, very excited about uh, having
uh, all the number of people respond and more uh, thank you for uh, your interest and your participation with our, the presentations that uh, Dr. Jeremiah and myself uh, are providing on our uh, weekly uh, gun dog seminars. So please ha have your questions uh, ready, uh, send them to me and uh, look forward to the next time. Have a wonderful day and good training.